Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to calculate a resultant velocity power spectral density uh, using some acceleration data. So first, we have some acceleration data in uh, Triax, acceleration data in a CSV file. I'm going to show you how you would calculate the resultant using just the raw data, uh, which is just the, the square root of the sum of squares. So the x-axis squared plus the y-axis squared plus the z-axis squared raised to the 0.5, the square root. And, and that's your resultant acceleration. I'm just going to do, going to make my data a little cleaner uh, to when I load it in, just have the time start at zero. OK, so here is my data, time, x, oops, y, z, and r for resultant. So I'm going to save this. And this is from a uh, Guess the Vibe segment of a train passing over uh, a bridge where I recorded that with a NDAC sensor. So there's a CSV file. So now first I need to load this into the Vibration Data Toolbox. So here we go. Oh, I should have saved that. Uh, on. Here we go. The vibration data toolbox is going to let me, you know, specify the variables, and I'll have a variable per uh, array or, or per column rather. So I already did that for time x, y, z, and r. So I'll hit open, and I'll get these uh, five discrete variables here. And I'll quickly just show you. If I wanted to compare these, plot multiple curves, and I would have to do the MATLAB syntax to combine the x-axis, the y-axis, and the resultant with time to make a uh, two-column matrix that the vibration data toolbox likes, x-axis, y-axis. Consultant time in seconds and acceleration in G. I'm going to plot all these curves on each other. And plot the curves. So here is the data. As you can see in the time uh, domain, it's not all that legible um, and that's what the power spectral density helps so much with but I'll do full time and I'll zoom in on a little bit of it um, and you can kind of see what the resultant is doing for us but even here it's kind of it's kind of messy uh, but you see it's it's the sum of uh, root, root, root some of the squares, so I'll save this as a zoomed version. Okay, if I could spell zoomed. All right, so now I have that um, data, and I'm going to calculate the power spectral densities of all these. So I'm going to go here, power spectral density, begin analysis, and again, I have to do this array combination, so Tx, and I'll do from 1 to, I think, I'll do 5,000. View processing options, and I'll do this first one. You get this kind of messy power spectral density, and you can clean this up by widening the frequency bin width. So if I want to do this, you know, it, it gets a little smoother, but an, an even nicer way is, is to smooth it uh, in logarithmic scale with octave bands. So I'm going to save this messy one. It's just PSDX. Save. Then do the Y axis. Save that. And then the Z axis. Now, I can't really calculate a uh, power spectral density off the R. I'll do it the resultant 
I'll do it here, but it's it's not right, as you can see, because the resultant is not oscillating about zero. So this is not a, a correct way to uh, calculate uh, the, the, the resultant acceleration. What we want to do is do this in the, the frequency domain. So here I have my power spectral densities. I'm going to now convert them into octave format. And I'll do a 1, 3. And you see here now it's, it's cleanly spaced uh, logarithmically. Uh, and I'll do PSD OX. Save that. The Y. Oops. <clears throat> Save that. And the Z. Save that. Now, in order to get a resultant, I need to export this data and manipulate it, unfortunately, in Excel. So I will just do export this to Excel, PSDX, form X, oops, PSD, oh, what I make these called? PSD underscore O underscore X. Uh, here we are. Okay, I'll take a second. Okay, I'm going to do the Y. going to do the Z. Okay, now I'm going to open my uh, my three Excel files that were created and combine them. So here's the x-axis. I'm going to grab the y-axis. Notice how the the frequency is all the same here in all these. So that's the Y, and then here's the Z. Ah, oh, shoot. I guess it doesn't like when I copy. That's the Z. Then I'm going to calculate the resultant again now in the frequency domain. So again, I'll do the X axis squared. Oops. Plus the y axis squared plus the z axis squared raised to the 0.5 the square root. And you can see they're dominated by the z axis, but they're they're, they're actually they're pretty good. So I'll save this now as a CSV file. to load it back in PSDs. Okay, now let me make everything small. All right, let's come back in here and import data. I'm gonna import a CSV. No header lines. Hopefully that worked correctly. Let's see. So they, it imported uh, this because it, yeah, so this broke it into four discrete PSDs. Now I'm going to calculate the overall RMS, and in this calculation, I can convert to uh, the uh, uh, velocity uh, power spectral densities. So here I'm doing PSD1, PSD is 1, which is the x-axis, and go on to 5,000 again. You see that's displacement. This is acceleration. Here's velocity. Here's cumulative RMS, but I'm going to just save the velocity. PSD V X, save. And now this is the... Um, 
the y-axis and I'm going to say this PSD V Y. Now this is the x-axis PSD V X. Save and then the PSD resultant and PSD V R. Save. Okay, now let's go look at what these plots look like. So here, let's compare first the, the three PSDs. And I'm just going to show you first the, the x-axis, the y, and the z. Uh, oh, I can't even I want to do that right now. So, this is frequency in the hertz, and it's acceleration, oops, I didn't spell it right, acceleration g squared per hertz. So these are the messy PSDs of the train passing by, and as you see, they're, they're messy. <clears throat> I'll call it PSD messy. Now that octave, when I converge the octave spacing, it gave me a nice clean PSD and I can compare it to the uh, resultant, which I also calculated. And see, so here you go. Look at that. That is nice. And as you see, the PSD uh, of the resultant is, is that summation uh, of the other axes. And so we'll save that as PSD octave. But now we also had calculated that PSD vibration, or, or sorry, velocity. And I did that in inches per second. Right, where is that? Yeah, inches per second, so this is velocity. And well, it's gonna be inches squared per second, or no, what is that gonna be? Inches, yeah, it's confusing. Okay, inches per second squared over hertz. Okay, let's plot those. Oh, what did I do wrong? Did I not save the Z? Oh, do this. Save this as Z. Okay. Here we go. That is the power spectral density of the um, resultant velocity from that train data uh, going by. And hopefully this is helpful to folks looking at uh, acceleration data, but, but knowing that velocity is going to be more indicative of, of energy and, and wanting to see how that, how that looks uh, in it, when you have a triaxial accelerometer and taking into account that it's moving in, in three, three dimensions, uh, three axes. So hopefully this is helpful and, and let us know if you have any questions and uh, good luck with your testing analysis. The analysis is the best part. All right, thanks.